Welcome to part 2 of the discussion video on module 4, Responsibility Accounting and Transfer Pricing. So, kanina nag-end tayo dito sa Responsibility Center, in-enumerate natin yung Cost Center, Revenue Center, Profit Center, and uh, Investment Center as Responsibility Center. So, merong mga uh, costs na naiya-allocate na, na natin uh, across doon sa mga Responsibility Centers na to to be able to measure the their performance kung sila ba ay uh, sila ba ay operating favorably fa favorably or unfavorably so let us classify classify first itong mga service department costs the service department costs can be allocated uh, by first analyzing itong uh, classifications ng departments it can be service department and administrative department so anong sinasabi lang dito uh, the service departments provide functional tasks for other internal units like purchasing, maintenance, engineering, security, and warehousing. When we say administrative departments naman, they provide management activities for the organization like human resources, accounting, legal services, and insurance services. So kung titingnan mo, what, uh, ano ang nag nagse-separate between the two kung paano mo ma-identify whether uh, a department is service or whether a department is administrative is the nature of the function na ina-assume ng bawat department normally uh, kapag related on the production of a product yaan ay considered as service department kaya tingnan mo purchasing department maintenance department maintenance department ng uh, mga, mga production facilities ito, engineering department related to production yan, security on, on, the, on the plant site yan, and warehousing of the inventory yan. While yung administrative, is, it is more of yung mga office, related to office and admin work, human resource, accounting, legal, and insurance. So how do we allocate the service costs? So, let us first analyze yung, yung objectives of allocating. One is the full cost objective. Punta tayo sa next slide. The motivation for manager's objective. And the compare alternate courses of action objective. So, isa-isahin natin. Anong sinasabi under the full cost objective? Ang objective kaya mo ina-allocate itong mga service costs is for the fair share of cost. Kung matatandaan mo under activity-based costing, uh, ito rin yung konsepto ng fair share. Kung saan yung mga units, talag, kung saan yung cost attributable to a particular product, dapat doon siya naka-allocate. This, is, this, is, uh, this applies also in responsibility accounting. Kung saan yung cost talaga, uh, kung saan yung cost ay mas doon nang gagaling yung majority of the cost dapat doon siya, dapat equitable ang iyong allocation. So, yun yung sinasabi under the full cost objective. How about the motivation for manager's objective? Imagine kung, kung yung department manager ay binibigyan ng cost na hindi naman, uh, hindi naman talaga attributable sa kanyang department mamadedemotivate yung yung managers na yon so the purpose of allocating the service cost is to motivate the managers that the cost the, that while they are performing their their functions in their responsibility center the cost that is allocated on their departments are equitable and fair next the compare alternate courses of action objective so ano sinasabi dito inaga allocate ka ng service cost to be able for you to reliably compare yung iba pang courses of action. It provides the best cost estimates when comparing alternatives. Why? Kasi kung equitable ang uh, kung tama ang pag-allocate mo ng cost kung saan siyang uh, responsibility center dapat, then re mas reliable yung cost figures na meron ka per responsibility center at mas mas madali na mag-analyze at, at mag-compare ng alternative courses of action kung reliable ang cost na meron ka per responsibility center. So, yun lang ang 
yung tatlong cost object yung uh, reasons kung bakit uh, we allocate these service costs next uh, let's move to the methods of allocating the, the service department cost one is the direct method second the step method and next is the algebraic method so let us discuss one by one yung direct method you assign cost is state to revenue producing area so you look at the step one step one uh, ang, ang service department daw dyan ay c1 at c2 at ang mga revenue uh, producing departments ay yung a Department A, Department B, and Department C. So, yung cost daw na meron on service, depart on service department 1 ay i-allocate across the revenue uh, producing departments A, B, and C. Okay, you look at step 2. Yung service department 2 cost ay i-allocate kay revenue producing A, B, and C. So, kung mapapansin mo, uh, the direct method does not recognize service provided to other service departments. So, hindi siya nag allocate ng service department cost to service department cost. So, yun yung, uh, kumbaga, directly ay ibinibigay doon sa revenue producing department. I mean, match yung cost doon sa kung saan ka uh, nag-generate ng revenue under the direct method. <coughs> Under the service, uh, yung itong tinatawag na, na service method, you partially recognize relationships among service departments. So, uh, tingnan mo ulit, under step 1, nag-allocate ka na for service department number 2 because you partially recognize relationship among service department because under this method, tinitingnan na meron pa rin namang for allocation dapat doon sa service department because nag -a -a, meron pa rin cost na nai-incur niya related to to department 1 cost. Next, uh, step 2. Same pa rin under the direct method. So, ano ang concept nito? Under this method, it does not recognize the two-way exchange of services between service departments. So, kung nag-charge ka na sa akin, hindi pwedeng cha-chargean kita pabalik. Remember, chinargean mo na ako from the service department 1 to 2 and then service department 2 cannot charge to department 1 because na i-charge ka na niyang ng cost dyan. Okay, next is the algebraic method. It provides daw the best allocation information. So, you look, you look at this. This is the same under the service method. You allocate the cost across the departments whether it is service or revenue producing department kaya nga nag allocate siya dyan then on, at, the, at the same time uh, this service department can also allocate the cost to, to uh, service department 1 kumbaga pwede yung two way allocation under the algebraic method it recognizes all interrelationships among departments as long as nag incur ka ng cost related sa akin ay at bibigyan kita ng allocation for that cost. The service cost allocation. The allocated service department costs are included in the overhead for the revenue producing areas. Okay? The service department costs are allocated to products or jobs through normal overhead assignment procedures. So, ano sinasabi dito? Kung ano man yung naibigay na sa'yo na service department costs, isasama mo yan sa yung kinukompute na uh, predetermined overhead application rate or the revenue producing areas. Okay. I think that ends the discussion on responsibility accounting. Uh, Mag-upload ako ng discussion related to the computational uh, part, yung practical application of responsibility accounting. So, uh, for now, let's proceed now. Ituloy natin sa transfer pricing. So, what is the concept of transfer pricing? So, tingnan natin ito. These are internal charges for the exchange of goods or services within the organization. Normally, may mga businesses na kailangan yung raw materials ng isa para sa production ng isang department. Kailangan mo yung raw materials na ginagawa ng isang department para naman uh, 
para naman magawa mo yung product mo at your department. So, normally, they charge uh, yung tinatawag na transfer pricing. These are internal, internally generated pricing uh, tools. They promote goal congruence. They make performance evaluation among se segments. Uh, they transform a cost center into a pseudo profit center. What does it mean when you say pseudo? Uh, umbaga parang quasi, quasi uh, parang, parang profit center, parang hindi, parang ganun siya. So the profit center encourages managers to to be entrepreneurial. So anong advantages niyan? It encourages development of beneficial services because uh, kumbaga, between the departments ay uh, nagtutulungan yung bawat departments in attaining the the goal of the the organization as a whole. So it uh promote making a service department to a profit center. So yung note dyan, the transfer prices are for internal purpose only. They are eliminated on external financial reports. So this is a management, since this is managerial accounting, you are looking at how the top management is looking at its internal data in making the best decisions for the organization. So how do we set this transfer price? So ang sinasabi dito, we set the maximum and the minimum. Maximum is the price that is no higher than the lowest market price. Sir, papano, di ba pag maximum, uh, yun na yung uh, the greatest amount, the greatest level kapag maximum. Then pag minimum naman, the lowest level, acceptable for the organization. So, ano lang sinasabi dito? Ibig lang sabihin niyang no higher than the lowest market price. Ang market price na tinutukoy niyan is yung outsider's price. So, dapat kapag transfer price ka, since, uh, since kayo ay nasa iisang organization lang, hindi pwede nang ipapasa mong presyo ay mas mataas pa doon sa pinakamababang presyo sa merkado. Dapat, lagi kang pwedeng pantay or mas mababa ka doon sa nasa market. Dahil kung mas mataas ka pa doon sa nasa market, malamang yung responsibility center na yun ay sa labas na lang bibili ng raw materials or ng products. So, yun yung konsepto niya. The minimum, ang sinasabi, is, it, it should not be less than the sum of the selling segments incremental cost plus the opportunity cost of the facilities used. Hindi naman daw pwedeng ang pagbili ay mas mababa dun sa selling segments incremental cost. Kasi yun na yung cost na incurred niya in producing that item or that output plus the opportunity cost of the facilities used. Kung baga, kung mas mababa dyan ang, ang ibabayad mo sa akin, hindi ko na lang yan sa'yo ibebenta. Ibebenta ko na lang yan sa labas kasi kikita pa ako sa labas. And remember, you are under one organization. So, the goal is to maximize the profit and to minimize the cost. Kaya, ganyan ang setup when we look at uh, setting our transfer prices. The ease of determining the transfer price, managers should understand how to compute and evaluate the transfer price. So, we have this, yung cost-based transfer price, the market-based transfer price, the negotiated transfer price. So, isa-isahin natin. The cost-based transfer price, ibig sabihin lang nito, uh, kapag cost-based transfer pricing, kung magkano mo siya, o kung magkano yung cost sa'yo sa department mo, doon mo siya ipapasa. So, ganun ang konsepto ng cost-based transfer pricing. Kaya nga, we com you compare your variable and absorption cost, actual versus the standard. Kapag naman market-based transfer price, kung magkano yung presyo sa labas, ganun mo siya ibebenta. Kasi, kung iisipin mo, total, bibili ka rin naman sa labas, o di sa akin ka na bumili. And we are under one organization. So, kung kikita ako, and... Kikita ako dahil same naman yung kikita ako dahil market price mo siya binili. Then, ikaw naman na bumibili na sa akin, hindi ka naman din nalugi because same lang din naman ang bili mo. 
uh, ng raw materials kung sa akin mo yan binili. Kung sa iba mo yan binili or sa akin, is, is the same lang din naman. The negotiated transfer pricing. So, anong, uh, normally, itong negotiated transfer pricing, it depends on, on the nature of the transactions. It may be below the market purchase price, pero may considerations on incremental and opportunity cost. So, kumbaga, uh, the buying and the selling uh, units are negotiating on the prices which are uh, ultimately will be for the benefit of the organization as a whole. So, cost-based, market-based, and negotiated-based. Um, the concept of dual pricing, ang sinasabi dito, the seller transfers at market or negotiated price, the buyer records transfer at cost-based amount, eliminates need to divide profits artificially, they provides relevant information for decision-making and performance evaluation, and they require internal reconciliation. So, anong sinasabi dito? Kapag ikaw yung seller, you transfer the price at market or yung kung magkano mo siya negotiate Pag ikaw naman yung buyer, nire-record mo naman siya at cost-based amount. So, whatever discrepancy it is will be reconciled eventually. So, ganun ang uh, konsepto ng dual pricing. Uh, the disadvantages and advantages of this transfer pricing, uh, one is they, one advantage is they permit evaluation of segment performance. Yes, they allow rational acquisition of goods and services. They provide flexibility to respond to changes, they encourage and reward goal growth. Yes, this is self-comprehensible. Disadvantages, this may cause disagreement among managers because when you, you haggle, you make negotiations, uh, this may cause disagreements. They add cost and takes time. It may not work for all departments, yes. Uh, it may cause underutilization or overutilization of services. It may cause dysfunctional organizational behavior. It may cause need to for year-end entries to eliminate transfer prices. So, yun yung mga, some of the advantages and disadvantages of using the transfer pricing. This multinational transfer pricing, I, I think I will not be discussing this because this applies to uh, only to organizations that are that have multinational operations. Okay, so I think that ends the discussion on transfer pricing. Uh, please uh, refer to the discussion video on the practical application of the Responsibility Accounting and Transfer Pricing, I will be providing a comp computational discussion videos related to this topic. So we just set up the concepts that you uh, have uh, understood. Kung baga, uh, you will be using these concepts when you analyze transactions. And more or less, in the CPE board exam, uh, since updates in managerial accounting is one, one of the many parts of the management advisory services, yung MAS, uh, normally dito nila nilalagay yung mga conceptual questions sa management advisory services on the last board exam I, I attended uh, itong management advisory services are more of conceptual questions uh, kaya yung mga yung mas, uh, mas inclined into answering uh, conceptual questions nakakabawi uh, when it comes to this, pero yung mga more on on computational or practical, ano, medyo nahirapan sila because they they prepared for for computational items when nung nagtake na ng board exam ay ay parang naging naging uh, very theoretical yung management advisory services. Well, it changes over time, but all you have to do is to prepare for 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 both a scenario of of a combination of a concept and practical questions or a a full blast computational exam or a full blast theoretical exam. So I think that ends the discussion on module 4 responsibility accounting and transfer pricing. Thank you.